this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I want to discuss about SF and BM. Before we discuss about SF, let us understand what is uh, the tension and what is compression. Suppose we hang a weight by say a piano wire. This weight is exerted in downward direction, right? And there is this tension which is felt in the piano wire in upward direction. This tension force and the weight force, they are acting in one line. They are equal and opposite acting in one line, right? So uh, this is the example of understanding tension. Look, suppose we have a table, right? And imagine that there is a single support. Now, if we place some weights on the table, there is a downward force acting uh, along the support, yes? And there is a reaction which is acting upwards. Once again, the, uh, the two forces are acting in one line. The two forces equal and acting in one line. This will give rise to compressive forces. So accordingly, we have tensile stress and compressive stress. Stress is force divided by cross-sectional area. right? So we can find out what is compressive stress and tensile stress uh, in uh, the example that is given over here. Now let us now let us now look at uh, an example whereby say there are two supports and let us say we have placed some beam on top of it. Now there is an upward reaction over here, there is upward reaction here and we can say that for all practical purposes the weight is acting uh, from the center of gravity of the beam and can we say weights, weight of the beam and the reactional forces they are not acting in one line. So there is a tendency to shear the beam along a plane which is perpendicular to the main axis of the beam. In olden time we had this riveted ship site whereby Assume that this rivet is holding the plates together. Now under stress, this plate wants to go in upward direction. This plate wants to go in downward direction. And if we look at the rivet, there is a tendency that the rivet will shear along a plane perpendicular to the axis of rivet. The shear force is also very evident on the ship. Let us try and understand how a shear force is generated on the ship. Suppose there is a weight in this hold alternate holds are loaded you know and the alter alternate spaces are not loaded so there is a tendency that this portion of the ship wants to come down and the other part wants to go up so this diagram represents that the forces are not well balanced on the ship there is a portion of the ship wants to go down, portion of the ship wants to go up. There is more or less similar buoyancy which is prevailing all over, but there is extra weight in these holds, you know. So there is a tendency to shear off. We will try to better understand what is shear force with the help of a simple beam and with the help of a box shaped vessel. Suppose there is a beam of 6 meters. And the beam is weighing uh, 60 kg. That means it exerts a force of 60 multiplied by 9.81 Newton. Right? So force is actually Newton. Kg is actually mass. But let us uh, try and understand with the help of kg what is the shear force. Now if this beam is supported say at... Uh, uh, 
at the ends, can we say that there will be a reactional force of 30 kg at each support? So the beam weighs 60 kg. There are these point supports at the end and the reaction forces would be 30 kg, 30 kg. Suppose I want to find out what is the shear force along this plane. So what I do is I place a screen over here and don't worry about the right side. Just look at the left side. I place the screen over here and I try to find out what is the algebraic sum of the forces which are acting to the left of the point under consideration. So I find 30 kg if I call it positive and this particular uh, segment uh, each weighing 10 kg and the convention for sign convention for the downward forces if it is negative to the left of point under consideration then this will be minus 10 this will be minus 10 total minus 20 the resultant is 10 kg so the value of shear force you now the force which is tending to shear off the beam at this point is 10 kg so this is how we understand what is the shear force all you have to do is place a screen and try to find out what are the forces to the left of point under consideration that will be shear force let us now try and understand what is the shear force in case of a box vessel suppose there is a box vessel which is of the length 40 meters and uh, therefore uh, of these four holes which can be seen each hole is 10 meter long and let us say there is the light weight of the ship is uh, 200 tons and uh, let us say you have 160 tons here 160 tons here and you have 80 tons over here 80 tons over here so the total buoyancy force if we consider in tons should be equal to total displacement total displacement is going to be 200 that is lightweight plus 320 plus 160 so that is 480 right 480 plus 200 680 tons so uh, we can say uh, the displacement is 680 tons so buoyancy force is also 680 tons because the buoyancy force has to be equal to 680 and the buoyancy which is acting at different uh, parts along the length must be uniform because it looks like the ship is floating even keel and the buoyancy force which is acting at a unit length is directly proportional to the draft. The draft is uniform so I suppose the buoyancy force also should be uniform and 680 divided by 40 that is 17 tons per meter is the buoyancy force all along the length of the vessel right and then uh, if we consider the downward force there is a higher downward force at hole number one and hole number four and lower downward force acting at hole number two and three there is a difference between the upward force and downward force right at different points you know and the difference of the buoyancy and the weight at any given point you know is called load so load is different than the weight can we say the uh, weight per unit length at hole number one and four you know weight per unit length at hole number one and four is uh, because of the light weight that is 200 tons right and because of the cargo that is loaded so can we say because of light weight that is 200 it is 5 tons per meter because 200 divided by 40 is 5 and because of the cargo here it is 16 tons per meter so can we say that the downward force here is 21 tons per meter right in this area in this area the downward force is 21 tons per meter 
But as I told you, buoyancy force is uniform and that is 17 tons per meter. So resultant force per unit length which is acting in hole number 1 is downwards and that is minus 4 tons per meter. We are trying to understand what is the shear force. Now the way we, I have found out that hole number 1 and 4 have got downward force of minus 4 tons per meter. If you do the similar calculations for this two holes you will find that in these two holes there is an upward load which is acting at uh, 4 tons per meter positive 4 tons per meter and if you and if you draw the graph for the load you will find that it can be drawn this way The load curve can be represented like this for the whole, uh, for this kind of loading. You can see that less cargo is loaded in the middle hold, more cargo is loaded in the end holds and naturally this will give rise to the <coughs> hogging because in middle part the ship would be uh, lifted upwards. But the load curve appears like this. Load therefore can be understood, load per unit length can be understood as the buoyancy per unit length acting at that point minus weight per unit length that is acting at that point. We are trying to understand, our original aim is we are trying to understand what is the shear force acting at any point. Suppose I want to find out what is the shear force that is acting on the bulkhead that is between hole number 1 and 2. So what I have to do is, I have to, on the load curve, I have to draw a screen and try to find out what is the area under the curve. What is the area under the load curve till the point of consideration. Point of consideration is the bulkhead between hole number 1 and 2. And look at this uh, uh, load curve. The value is minus 4 throughout. And this distance from here to here is 10 meters. So minus 4 multiplied by 10. So uh, can we say uh, minus 4 tons per meter multiplied by 10 meter will give me 40 tons. Minus 40 tons. So the value of shear force over here is minus 40 tons. So uh, minus 40 tons is the force that is trying to shear this part of the ship. It is trying to shear off the hull at this part and the value is minus 40 tons. Right? It, it, it means that if I want to find out what is the shear force in the middle of hold it will be not 40 it will be 20. Right? Likewise I can find out what is the shear force in the middle and if you look at the diagram this area and this area both are of opposite signs so probably the shear force in the middle will be zero. Shear force for this kind of loading in the middle of the ship will be zero and please understand if you have a shear force zero at any point the value of bending moment will be one of the highest ones in fact all the peaks will occur at all those points where shear force is zero. With this kind of loading, we can see that the maximum bending of the ship will be because of the hogging as if the ship, this part is lifted up, right? And maximum uh, hogging because of the loading will be in the middle part of the ship, that is the midship of the ship. And this is also confirmed by the fact that shear force in the middle of the ship is zero. Wherever shear force is zero, BM will have peak values or probably the maximum value right so i hope you have got some idea of a shear force where i gave you the example of uh, a beam and a box vessel in case of a ship shape vessel what happens is we try to find out like here in case of box vessel the buoyancy was uniform because the draft was uniform and the ship's shape was box shape but this does not happen in case of a ship shape vessel. In case of ship shape vessel, the buoyancy curve is found 
say uh, in the olden time it was found by the Bonzin curve. Bonzin curve give the value of buoyancy at different points or rather the buoyancy per unit length at different points. So we'll try to understand what is this Bonzin curve and how buoyancy curve can be drawn with the help of buoyancy. Uh, uh, Bonzin curve in my next lecture but for the time being just to have a basic idea of even bending moment let us try and understand what is bending moment with the help of uh, a beam and with the help of a box shape person. Like in case of say a uniform beam suppose it is of 8 meters length and it is weighing 80 kg and let us once again assume that the beam is supported at the end so that you have uh, a 40 kg reactional force uh, acting at each support that is the point support right and I want to find out at say any point say for example at this point what is the bending moment so for that uh, we have to assume that there is a possibility of this point uh, being pivoted as if the beam can turn about this point so let us consider all the forces which are acting to the left of this pivot point you know what are the forces which are trying to turn the beam at this point clockwise and also anti-clockwise right this 40 kg at a distance of 2 meters is trying to turn the beam clockwise you can see it has a tendency to turn the beam clockwise so clockwise to the left can be considered as positive and the bending moment because of 40 kg will be 40 multiplied by 2 is equal to 80 kg meters. Now you have two segments weighing 10 kg each so 20 kg of the beam acting from the middle of 2 meters trying to turn the beam anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise to the left is negative so can I say uh, the weight which is acting at this point could be considered as 20 multiplied by this distance is 1 meter 1 is equal to minus 20 kg meters so if I have to find out the bending moment at this point I don't have to worry about what are the forces and what are the moments to the right the beam is in equilibrium so uh, even if I use the forces to the right you know you know uh, they will give the same value so I don't have to do double calculation I just need to consider one side of the beam the resultant bending moment because of all the forces on the left to the left of the point under consideration the resultant is plus 60 kg meter and according to our convention uh, positive bending moment uh, you know of the forces to the left of point under consideration would be positive and positive means sagging that means there is a tendency that this point is sagging with a, a moment of with a bending moment of 60 kg meter as I said earlier now uh, it, the real uh, unit of the bending moment would be not kg meter it would be newtons meter which means 60 multiplied by 9.81 so many newtons meter newton meters that is the bending moment at this point let us try and understand the bending moment with a simple example of a ship uh, same ship that I talked about lightweight is 200 tons you know floating at even keel and you might have 160 tons over here 80 tons over here and we just now saw that we expect that the maximum bending moment would be in the midship point at the midship uh, of the ship let us try and see what are the forces which are let us consider the ship uh, as a beam as if this is a beam only now the upward force which is acting uh, because of the buoyancy total uh, buoyancy force was uh, I think 680 tons and out of the 680 tons 380 tons is acting from the forward uh, part of the midship 
and 300 and 340 tons from the forward, 340 tons from the aft. So 340 tons, that is the buoyancy force which is acting in the forward area from a point halfway, that is 10 meters from the midship, will cause 340 multiplied by 10, 3400 tons meter. And this is positive because clockwise movement to the left of point under consideration. Now, the light weight light weight of the ship is 200 tons so 100 tons is forward of midship 100 tons is aft of midship that 100 tons multiplied by the distance of 10 meter that is minus 1000 tons meter is uh, the light weight of the ship trying to bend this point so light weight of the ship right is 200 tons right and 100 tons forward is trying to bend the ship or hog the ship about the midship with a moment of 1000 tons meter. Likewise this cargo that is 160 tons at a distance of 15 meters because this, this is 10 and this is 5. That makes it minus 2400 and this 80 tons at a distance of 5 meters is minus 400 right 80 multiplied by 5 is minus 400 so so the total negative uh, uh, moment is uh, minus 3800 tons meter positive moment is 3400 tons meter the resultant is minus 400 tons meter so this is uh, the bending moment which is uh, at this midship point and minus means the ship is hogging as I told you as per our sign convention final moment if it is negative it would mean that the bending moment is hogging so this is how we find out the shear force and bending moment and this is how uh, uh, please understand what is shear force and bending moment with simple examples of beam and box vessel.